Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Kevin with the Weird Homes Tour. Thank you very much for joining us for another home tour. If you're new to uh, the Weird Homes Tour, new to our channel and all that fun stuff, uh, we do home tours of unique, eclectic, and creative homes. Uh, if you want to see more tours just like this, uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the little bell for notifications so that you know whenever we have a new tour up. And so this week, we're really excited. We have Brian and Lisa. Uh, their, uh, their Arizona home has this amazing collections, um, curiosities, everything that you can imagine. And so we're going to flip it on over to them. Hey, Brian, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How's everybody doing? Oh, I think we're doing pretty well. We're going to get started here in just a tour for uh, for everyone who is watching us live. Uh, there's a chat box, and you can put in your questions, and we'll get to them along the way. Brian, thank you so much for surviving the heat uh, to give us this tour of your amazing home. And I'll uh, get started. Okay. I love it. Well, welcome to the Obsession Collection. Wow. So how long have you both been collecting? It started early on, um, like you had indicated on the, uh, the tagline for the broadcast with the shark mm -hmm. eggs. Uh, those, those started, uh, I'd say, maybe 10, 15 years ago. We found those on a beach in Carpinteria, just south of Santa Barbara. And uh, that's what started it. Oh, wow. Awesome. And uh, the, Mel has a question, and this may be related to this. It may be kind of a different one. So what is the oldest piece you have in your collection? I know we kind of talked about your first pieces. Do you have like an oldest piece? We do. As a matter of fact, uh, when we were in New Zealand in 20, 2018, we found a specimen on a beach there that is dated 250 to 300 million years old. Oh my God. Yes. So some of the things that you're looking at now, we have a, a case that just has odd, odds and ends in it. There's some taxidermy mm -hmm. pieces. There's a collection of eyeballs, uh, a snake skin dice that have uh, skulls as the numbers on the dice, um, a snuff bottle. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to the collection. It's just stuff that is eclectic, stuff that we like, the unusual, the hard to find. Uh, we've got three busts of Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, and Boris Karloff. You know, mat life masks we have. Um, just There's just so much that I have no doubt that this half an hour or, or, or time limit is going to run out before we have a chance to get to everything. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to as much as we can. And uh, yeah, why don't, uh, why don't you kind of highlight some of, some of the items that we're seeing here? Okay. Well, we have here a piece of the glass that was used to shield the scientists when they were coming up with the Manhattan Project. Oh, my God. Yes, and it's highly volatile where we can't touch it unless we have gloves on because it'll seep through our skin. Uh, underneath it here, we have a piece of wood from Walt Disney's first workshop at Burbank when he moved to California. Oh, wow. Yep. And then uh, some newer pieces that we have. We found uh, these display cases. And what we did was we turned them into, uh, I guess, insect displays modeled after the Victorian butterfly display, displays of uh, old, where we uh, put these all together ourselves with various butterfly specimens and dragonflies and beetles. We have uh, two of them that we've put together. Oh, wow. And did you, did you look at uh, different kind of um displays that you liked or did y'all just kind of wing it pun intended and well, uh, uh, figure out what you what you want to do we did both actually we looked at mm -hmm. how some of them were put together so we had an idea where to start with and then we came up with the idea itself by laying out the branches 
figuring out how we want to put them in there and then just coming up with whatever specimens we wanted to put in there that we liked the size the shapes that sort of thing awesome and uh you know for, for everyone who who kind of sees the butterfly collection they want to do something similar is it is it difficult to maintain or you know is it once you put it together it's set you can set it and forget it once it's put together, uh, you could set it and forget it. You oh, can continue nice. to add to it if you want, or just leave it as is. The uh, octagonal display, the last one, uh, is in fact sealed. So that's not something that I want to take apart because it was a pain to put it back together when we took it apart. Very cool. Yeah, let's uh, let's see some more stuff. Okay, so some other pieces we have here. Um, the things in the foreground that look like little uh, cauldrons are going to be props from the stop motion movie, Pirates, A Band of Misfits, actual props used in the movie itself. And then we have uh, two, that's the first of two, shrunken heads. And here's the second one. Oh, very cool. Both of which made by the tribes that originally did shrunken heads, but in order for them to I guess survive now. They're still manufacturing shrunken heads out of llama fur, goat skin, that sort of thing. Got it. And so those are authentic shrunken heads and not just like movie props or anything, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Now, cool. Not actual shrunken heads of humans, but, mm -hmm. but still shrunken heads. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. And then this wall here is just another wall of everything that we have that we've gathered. We've got a morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G umbrella mm -hmm. from the 1800s that we found, Lily Munster doll, a Casper doll, and then uh, some other movie props. We've got a pumpkin from uh, the Corpse Bride that was used in the movie. And then uh, there's a, a spine from one of the skeletons that was used in the Corpse Bride as well right there. Oh, wow. Uh, some other things real quick before we get on to the next room. We've got a 1920s uh, fortune telling cup that uh, are hard to come by. It uh, We've got two of them now that we got lucky and found. And then uh, right underneath that is going to be a roof tile from Braun Castle in Romania, the basis behind uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, cool. So for a lot of these movie props, are you fans of the movies and you're going out and you're, and you're finding them or like hunting for these specific items or are you want, are, you know, are you just kind of finding them and like, oh, this is cool. I want to put this in my collection. Oh, no. We're, we're, well, we're actively looking for the stop motion movie props for movies that we like, of course, mm -hmm. they're getting harder and harder to come by. Uh, but you know, if we go to a flea market or, or an antique store and we see something that we like that is just jumps out at us, we, we pick it up and just add it to uh -huh. the collection and find a home for it or find a curio cabinet. Um, you'll see here shortly that I think we have a total of nine curio cabinets that we just keep adding and adding and adding. Very cool. And it, it, it are these mostly like uh, it kind of looks like like Tim Burton, a stop motion kind of uh, quirky kind of uh, movies. Is that kind of what you guys are looking for? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, several opportunities where we've seen a lot of the uh, stop motion props from Paranorman on display, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas on display. Uh, but we're fixated with the Haunted Mansion and Nightmare Before Christmas and and the movie Hocus Pocus and and all of those types of movies. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's see some more. Okay, so as we transition from the front room into the living area, we have this paint bathroom. This is our uh, burlesque bathroom, and it's completely out of the norm from the rest of the house because of the pink paisley and metallic wallpaper that's on the wall. Oh, amazing. And so was that, was that like by choice that you find this 
a wallpaper and you wanted to to create the bathroom or was it just like a holdout from whenever you bought the house and decided to do something with it? Well, we made several attempts of trying to decorate that powder room the way we wanted. And it wasn't until we happened upon that wallpaper that we decided to go that route. And then it just took off from there. Nice. So on the table, you just saw uh, an 18th century doll that is headless. <laughs> and that's how she came and that's how we found her. So that's a perfect addition to the collection. <laughs> Very nice. And then uh, on this wall here, several trinkets that we found during our journeys. We've got moss from Braun Castle, again, uh, where Dracula was at. We've got a piece of chain mail from the 14th century. We've got sand from the Sarlacc pit in Return of the Jedi. And for those, if I got that wrong, don't crucify me. <laughs> we've got uh, ash from Mount St. Helens. Um, we've got several other clay pipe pieces that we found while we were mudlarking on the Thames and mudlarking is going out. And when the Thames goes out the tide, you look for artifacts in the, in the mud and people find them left and right. One of which is this pipe right here. And then we get into the next curio cabinet and this has the display pieces that started it all. These are going to be the shark eggs right here in the middle up on top. So cool. And so in here, we've got several specimens, all of which we've found for the most part. All the skulls we found on the beach or on hikes. Um, what you know, Various pieces that are just, we found all over the place. In, in this uh, cabinet, we've got a piece of meteorite. We've got petrified wood. We've got early South American or Southwest pottery, uh, woolly mammoth tooth, woolly mammoth fur, woolly mammoth meat, uh, muscle tissue actually. Again, all stuff that we just find that's unusual and add to the collection. Here's the rock that's 250 to 300 million years old that's got the actual fossil in it, not just an imprint. Amazing. And you're, you, you do a lot of traveling. Are, are you collecting a lot of these items on your travels or are you shopping online? A little bit of both? Kind of a with... little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of which in this cabinet we have found uh, during our travels and have been mm -hmm. able to bring them back. But some of which uh, obviously we've had to order. Um, I mean, there's a human vertebrae in there. We can't find that one on travels, but if you did, then... <laughs> can't stick that going. in your luggage. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, this picture up here of the skulls is a picture we took of the uh, Bone Church in the Czech Republic. For those who don't know what that is, look up the Bone Church and you'll see what we're talking about. They've got bones and skeletons and, and everything from 40,000 victims that they put into this church and constructed a sanctuary out of them. Um, We've got another piece of, or a piece of gingerbread that we've collected from uh, Chesky Krumlov in uh, the Czech Republic as well. Very cool. Uh, one prop that we've put together is the Valiant and Valiant Detective Agency door from Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Amazing. And before we get too far away from the fossils, Chris wants to know, uh, what is uh, your favorite fossil? Um, it would have to be the, the specimen we found on the beach, um, only because we knew that there were going to be specimens on this beach, mm -hmm. but we were walking to get to the area to so we could look at them and gather. And this just happened to be sitting in the surf line, just, just sitting there by itself. And we just happened upon it, picked it up, turned it over, and there it was. So we didn't do a lot of hunting for it. But we found that one and, and it paid off. Very cool. So my addition to this collection, and this is going to be totally off the wall, is my Bob's Big Boy collection. <laughs> I've got a ton of Bob's Big Boys. I've got Bob Big Boy uh, tattoo as well. And then it transitions down into my Santas. I've got several uh, Santa figures that I've collected, salt pepper shakers, vintage stuff. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find. 
Awesome. And, uh, and what, what was the genesis for uh, collecting Bob's Big Boys and uh, Santa's? Well, I've always been a Christmas person. Mm -hmm. And my holiday is Christmas. I go all out as much as I can. Uh, the rest of the family is Halloween. So I humor them and they humor me. <laughs> but I've been fixated with uh, Santas and Christmas since forever. So that's, that's just how it's been. And, and I, I particularly like to target the, the vintage stuff from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Because it's nice. just getting harder and harder to find. Yeah, and uh, Rhea wants to know, kind of with that vintage stuff, what's your oldest Santa collectible? Um, it's got to be the one down in the middle right there. Mm -hmm. um, he's from the 50s, and he looks tattered, but I love it how, he's, how he looks now. Very cool. All right, so more collection of the... Uh, Gingerbread pieces. These are decorative gingerbreads, again, from uh, Chesky Crumb Love. And uh, they're just intricately designed, and we loved them. And uh, these are specimens that we brought back with us when we came back from from uh, the Czech Republic. And it's a old-world recipe that they still use to this day in this tiny little shop. So cool, and they're are they are you able to maintain them pretty easily since they are gingerbread or? Yes, yes, and they're they're made such a manner that you know unless they're exposed to uh, moisture or, or something like that that they're going to just they're going to last. All right, so the next room is our TV room, and what you're looking at here is cat shelves and a cat bridge that we put <laughs> up for our eight, yes, eight cats. Wow. And we've got a 19 foot ceiling and a rope bridge with Mola Ram from Indiana Jones part two um, hanging from them. And then some of the uh, shelves that were up here, we've got pieces that we've put together. We've got a helmet from Lord of the Rings that we built. We've got Cronin's blades from Hellboy that we made. Cronin's mask, and then you might be able to see it, but uh, the gun, the handgun that Hellboy used, we made that as well. All of those pieces are signed by Mike Nignola, the guy who uh, animated and came up with the Hellboy concept. So cool. All right, so the next thing we're going to is, this is a geisha wig and a carrying case that we discovered in an antique store from the 1950s. And then it's sitting on a case of all of our medical supplies that we've collected. We've got ampules, we've got vials that have sutures in them from the 1800s, we've got burners, we've got, we've got a silicone breast implant We've got uh, teeth. We, there's all sorts of stuff in there. Again, stuff that we just find strange and unusual that we like to add to the collection just as a talking point. Yeah, if, if anything breaks down uh, in, in y'all's bodies, you, you have some spare parts laying around, right? There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so the next cabinet, we've got more of the fortune telling cups. There's two of them in there that we've been able to find. We've got numerous um, ostrich and emu eggs. Um, we've got a fibula that the Romans used to hold their garments on. Uh, maids hats. We've got, there's just all sorts of stuff that are in there. And what's significant about this case that all these pieces are in, before we started moving things into this case, this case was creaking and making noise on its own. There's no reason for it. I mean, the floor is not uneven. The cats don't do anything to it. Nobody's near it. And it'll just creak and make noise on its own. Oh, so we, we get this question a lot um, with collections. Uh, do, you, do you think any of your items are haunted? Well, we'll have uh, 
our camera woman go over to this piece right here. And I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, there you go. This is, uh, I guess, one of those touristy type pieces that you could buy on a beach in, I don't know, maybe the Caribbean, where they take some sort of ray or skate and cut it apart and let it dry to where it looks like an alien type thing. Mm -hmm. So we have friends who obtained this specimen from a lady uh, at a uh, garage sale. And the lady said, just get it out of my house. Just get it out of here. It's cursed. I don't want it. So they had it a month before their animals started dying. And they didn't believe in that stuff. So they saged the house to get rid of the evil spirits. And nothing more happened. Well, when they moved, they offered it to us. And we didn't believe in that stuff either. But we didn't have it a month before our youngest cat just keeled over and died at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, I'm sorry so to hear that. Immediately saged the house. And nothing malevolent has happened since. But we have things that go on in this house. We have people talking. We have footsteps. We have... Um, feels like somebody's crawling on the bed at night. We have all sorts of uh, goings on in this house. So hmm. I would say we have visitors, but it's not anything negative haunted wise. Mm -hmm. And now we're making our way upstairs. This is a family wall. And uh, we have a haunted mansion door that we've put together. And now we're stopping here real quick. This is halfway up the stairs. You get another curio cabinet. And uh, on the bottom of this curio cabinet, we have something that's referred to as a thunder cup. And for those who don't know what that is, in the Southwest cowboy days of old, we uh, found this in Tombstone. And this is what they used to go to the bathroom in hotels and brothels. Mm. And then it'd be rinsed out from there. Uh, we have a face uh, sitting here on this uh, curio cabinet. This is a cigarette dispenser from the 1920s. It's currently filled with bubblegum cigarettes. And it still works. Hmm. And then uh, continuing upstairs, we put this uh, loft space together. It's a... Uh, a Harry Potter slash 1920s Art Deco slash Fantastic Beasts Where to Find Them type loft. And this is going to be uh, Lisa's baby up here. So we've got a lot of greens, a lot of blues, Art Deco stuff, and a lot of artifacts that we've been able to obtain going to London. We've got the spider that we put in, a spider light that we put together up here. Um, just decorations from uh, the Harry Potter movies, wands, uh, just all sorts of displays that are in the curio cabinets up here uh, from the movies, ideas from the movies, that sort of thing. Very cool. Uh, Rio kind of mentions that it reminds him a, a bit of the, the shape of water. Uh, did that kind of type of movie influence the way that you collected these items and, and put them together, especially with that you know, art deco blue water wall picture? Uh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we missed it downstairs, but we have a curio cabinet that's almost 100% devoted to shape of water and everything Doug Jones. Mm. Um, we've met him several times um we've got pieces autographed by him and and if i wasn't around lisa would uh, actively seek him out <laughs> <laughs> so very cool yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's see some more Yeah, and so uh, as a as a cat lover, a cat owner myself, I, I have to know how 
how well do the cats uh, live with all of these items? Like, are they are they knocking stuff down off of tables at all, or are they did they learn to live with them? Well, they've learned to live with them. Uh, some of the some of the pieces that they have knocked off have not been able to be salvaged, obviously. Mm. But that's one of the reasons why we have all the display cabinets to keep all the better stuff away from them. This here is a uh, taxidermy puffin that we got from Iceland. Um, it took a little bit of getting him here. And then uh, we have a, a kaibab squirrel that are only found near the Grand Canyon, northern part of Arizona. The story behind this squirrel is, is this came from a, a family friend who, uh, while they were camping, this thing latched onto its dog's nose, wouldn't let go. So now <laughs> he has joined the collection here. And then this here is the Shape of Water cabinet that we were just talking about. Got pictures uh, of Lisa with uh, Doug Jones, several Shape of Water pieces, dolls, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. We've got a Mac Tonight doll, if you remember that. Those from the uh, 80s who were part of the uh, the McDonald's revolution back when Mac Tonight was doing the McDonald's commercials. This is a doll that uh, Doug Jones emulated. He was uh, the one who acted in it. We got him to uh, sign that as well. And then uh, Krampus, uh, a picture of Krampus from Prague when we were there for Christmas, as well as a Krampus bell. Uh, stuff that we've, again, collected while traveling abroad. And then uh, we have two marionettes from the 1950s from Walt Disney. We have uh, Captain Hook, and then we have a Peter Pan. There is a third one that's Wendy, a part of the set, and I'm actively trying to find her. And then, uh, you know, Captain Hook light that we've put together where he's holding the lantern. Um, and then this case that's underneath all of them are going to be more stuff that we've gathered from New Zealand and in parts of the Caribbean and, and the country bears jamboree. So there's just so much to look at and we've flown through it. I know, but if there are any, you know, questions or if people want to reach out uh, to the Instagram page or the TikTok page and send instant messages, we'd be more than happy to take pictures, uh, take video of something else, send them, you know, if they want more ideas uh, about what's going on and more information. Uh, there's just so much of it here. And I know that we flew through the collection uh, to make sure we fit in uh, the time by concentrating on pieces that uh, we wanted to highlight. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, yeah, thank you so much. The, uh, yeah, I mean, with, with a collection this size, I imagine we could spend hours and hours talking about it. Uh, but we still have some time and uh, there's some good questions out there. So let me, um, let me see if I can get one that I can highlight here. So Chris has another question. Uh, a lot of your collection is from overseas. Is there a one location you would like to explore uh, more, like the most next? Uh, well, we've been wanting to get back to New Zealand and do more exploring there. If if you've never mm -hmm. been to New Zealand, I'm telling you, you've got to you've got to go. Everybody's got to add that to their bucket list because it's like nowhere else in the world. I mean, it's when they say you know green and grass and all that stuff. Here in Arizona and, and, and other parts of the Southwest, it's brown and then it's tan. That's mm -hmm. it. I mean, when I say it's green, the colors that are there, that just the, the, everything that's on there is just in, incredible. And that would be the first place. But then obviously we'd want to get back to uh, Europe, the Eastern Bloc countries again, and uh, do some more collecting there, see what we come up with. Maybe even Scandinavian countries, come up with stuff there. Nice. Is uh, are, are a lot of these locations? Are you inspired to travel them because of your love for movies? Uh, like, is it like you go out and you find the film, the filming locations and you want to go see where they were at, or no, not not so much. Well, some of them, 
some of them. Mm-hmm. Like when we went to New Zealand, obviously you have to go see some of those Lord of the Rings sites. Um, you've got to go to Hobbiton. We mm-hmm. did as many of those as we could. And it's like, again, it's unlike anything else, um, standing in Hobbiton where it, it was filmed and where it took place. I mean, they built the place. It's still there. And you can go take a tour of the place. So a, a lot of the places that we go to, we just plan trips and want to go to those places. And then we branch out from there. We'll go out and explore what's in the area or we'll do preemptive research. Not we, she does. Preemptive <laughs> research on things in the area, things that were filmed, uh, things of note historical, like going to Braun Castle or we were in the house where Vlad the Impaler was born. I mean, people do that, but do people seek that stuff out when they travel? And we do. Awesome. And uh, and so we have a couple more questions. I want to hit you up with another one. Uh, Chris wants to know, um, or no, I'm sorry, Mel wants to know, uh, what is a dream piece you'd like to add to your collection? Are there any holy grails that you're that you just you have to have if you can get it? Well, we'd love to have anything from Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's stop motion. But, I, I mean, like they just sold, I think, Santa's sleigh. Not Santa's sleigh, but the sleigh that Jack used and the reindeer. It's like $10 million. So, I mean, that's just not happening. Yeah. Uh, so those would be some of the uh, the dream pieces, more of the stop motion stuff. But, again, there's not one holy grail that we're looking for. It's just whatever is striking our fancy at the time whatever it sounds like we want to add to the collection i mean mm-hmm. we just ordered some uh scales for roman armor you know from 100 uh ad uh that's coming um so it's just stuff that we look for it just pops up in our searches or or is is in correlation with what we're doing online and we'll get ads for it and or we'll get suggestions and we'll go look and then it just goes from there Nice, nice. And so that that kind of there's a, a follow up with that that I think is good. So Rhea wants to know uh, what is the piece you were the most proud of in your collection. That's you have to choose thing. one. You can't say I like them all the most. You have to choose one. Well, it's going to sound corny, but I had to say my wife because that's how it started. Oh, I mean, if it wasn't her, I mean. The, the, no telling where this would be. I mean, I'd have movie posters or, or posters of Farrah Fawcett on the wall or something like that. I mean, it, this is this is not how it started when we first came together, but it's gravitated to this and it's just taken off and it's it's going crazy. Nice. And uh, and so for the people that want to follow you, you mentioned a little bit about this before, but uh, again, um, what what's a good place that people can go? Uh, check out a little bit more about the collection, maybe get in touch with you and all that fun stuff. Okay, on TikTok, on on Instagram, it's going to be Hill and Mansion, so H-I-L-L-E-N, and then Mansion. Mm-hmm. And then TikTok is Shade Manor, so S-H-A-D-E, okay. Manor, on TikTok. Okay, and so yeah, both of those places you have for your, your collection and stuff? Yes, and I know that we had, uh, or Lisa started posting pictures and videos uh, recently on TikTok of various items in the collection. But again, if anybody has questions or wants to see a specific thing, they could instant message and then we could put together a video clip or, or, or answer questions the best we can or pictures or whatever if they want to see something specific. Because again, there's just so much stuff that we glanced over that I know there's going to be stuff that people saw in passing that they're going to want to know about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could do a whole, uh, a whole series of, uh, of just your home, I think. Well, and I think what we need to do is, is put those little stickers on the ground and give everybody a headset and have them just go from sticker to sticker. <laughs> this cabinet we have, you know, and because when we have people over, they just spend hours looking at everything, you know, when mm-hmm. we entertain, which is, and that's what it's here for. That's what we're trying to do is is get people inspired to get people to look at what we've got mm-hmm. and just answer the questions and have them look at the stuff like a kid looking in a toy store or window amazing amazing 
uh, Brian, Lisa, thank you both so much for uh, giving us this brief uh, look at your amazing collection. Uh, I hope that everyone watching uh, this video uh, hops online, uh, follows you on TikTok, follows you on Instagram, so they can uh, delve a little bit deeper into, into it. And uh, thank you so much for, for sharing your home with us. Thank and, you. And all the people who are kind of watching us uh, at home, participating live, watching this video afterwards, thank you so much for spending your time and seeing this video. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to us. And uh, while you're at it, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, drop a like. Uh, hit us up with a comment. Uh, you know, let us know what your favorite item was. Let us know there's a home that we should follow up with and and have on the a YouTube later. So. Uh, Brian, Lisa, thank you again, and thank you everyone for joining us. Have a great night, all right? Thank you.